Hello and welcome to another Electronics and More video. In this video I would like to show you something very cool that I made that's going to be of great use for testing things. This is going to be placed on my workbench next to one of my DC power supplies. And in this video I'm going to be referring to a few of my other videos. So if you do hear me mention a particular video and you're interested in watching that video, you can click on the circle with the eye at the upper right hand corner of your screen or you can look in the video description area for those links. Right off the bat you're going to see the knob on top and think that this is a Variac that I made. Now I did consider making a Variac using the very large toroid that I found. It was about this big. It was on a trip to the ReStore. I picked it up for I think around five or six dollars. It was very cheap. And the secondary winding on it was a 12 volt 50 amp. So I really didn't want to have to destroy it to make this project. So I found another way to be able to limit the current. So if I need to work on something that operates at 120 volts and there's an issue with it where something is overheating, by using the setup here, I'll be able to limit the current. I could bring it way down. So if I want to check out a power supply board or anything else operating at 120 volts, I can keep the current extremely low to help pinpoint problems with certain things. Now what I did in order to be able to limit the current out of this receptacle, which is limited to a maximum of 10 amps, I used a triac based voltage current limiting circuit. And I purchased it online because it really wasn't worth my time putting one together. It is rated up to 220 volts or 240, as high as 30 amps. Now I'm only using 10 and there is a very large heat sink on the Triac. No heating issues at all with that part. I'm going to show you the inside in a little while, but first let me explain more how this works. As you rotate the control on top, you can vary the amount of current flowing out of this receptacle at 120 volts. You're going to see the actual voltage reading displayed on this analog meter, which is across the receptacle, and you're going to see how much current is flowing through the device that you have plugged in. Now the housing here is actually a subwoofer housing. I found it at the ReStore and it was perfect for this project. I only paid three dollars for it. This plastic cover wrapped over the front and down. There was all kinds of holes here which I did not want to look at so I put this nice stainless strip from the hobby store there glued it in with E6000, which is excellent stuff. If you're looking for a good adhesive, look for E6000. comes in clear and white. This cover was about that high above this. And there was a speaker in the center with a knob for controlling the volume. And the cover, like I said, folded around. This was perfect because if you look at the top of this, you can see right there there's markings. And it's just beautiful because I could actually use that as a guide for the maximum amount of current all the way down to the minimum. There was a hole underneath this plastic cover where the speaker was and it was a rectangle but I had to cut it much larger because I did add a lot more things inside. Not only did I want a way to regulate all the current out of this receptacle and it is limited to 10 full amps, I also wanted the ability to be able to test 220 or 240 volt electronics or anything else operating up to 4 amps. So it's really really great because if I want to check something I can use my 120 volt AC receptacle not have to go hunting around for a 240 volt receptacle everything is right here. I turn that on and as you can see there's a cooling fan and it's pulling a lot of air through this unit. I'll show you the holes I made in a minute. It's keeping the transformer cool which I made. There's a video showing how I made that transformer. It's a step up and a step down made from a microwave oven transformer. Both circuits have a 10 amp slow blow fuse right here. So if I turn this one off, I could put them both on at the same time, but I wouldn't want to use them at the same time because I may blow the fuse. But power through this wire. I changed this from a number 18 gauge wire to a 16 to be able to handle 10 amps of current. 
that wire first place goes to the fuse after the fuse to the power switch and to this power switch both of these are protected by the 10 amp fuse the cooling fan has its own 12 volt transformer rated around 350 milliamps it's tied into the power supply with this switch when the 240 volts is turned on the fan will keep the transformer nice and cool now I'm going to show you the different sides of the unit we're going to look at the left side first in this image here you can see where I drilled the hole so when the air is drawn inside the unit it is directed directly at the transformer core between the primary and secondary windings now you can take a look at the back side of the unit you can see another hole it was actually a very long tube I cut it and that's also directing airflow at the transformer core now you're looking at the right side of the unit with the cooling fan and now we're going to take a look at the bottom I added these rubber feet there was nothing but felt airflow is also able to enter through the top front of the unit underneath the gray plastic cover the transformer I rewound the high voltage secondary which was originally 2000 volts and I made it down to 240 volts. In that video I show you how it's done and I also post a link to some software to make it very easy for you to calculate the number of turns for a transformer that you may desire. The transformer in here can be used as a step up or a step down. So if I wanted to connect it to 240 it would put out 120. If I hook it up to 120 it will put out 240 just like in this case. The transformer does run very warm without the cooling fan because it is fairly saturated because I did not replace the primary winding. I only replaced the secondary winding. I also needed a way to test things operating at 24 volts AC, which is very common. It's used on HVAC systems for relays, solenoids, and many other things, and it's extremely useful. So I have an output here, and that's 24 volts two full amps. The primary side of the transformer for this one has a 2.4 amp fuse on it. The only way that fuse will blow is if these leads are shorted. I could plug in a banana jack, unscrew it, slide the wire through, tighten it down, or I could even get one of those connectors, slide it in between, and then tighten it. There is another great use for having this 24 volt AC output. I can use it for identifying the primary and secondary windings of an unknown transformer and I can also use it for identifying a 120 volt primary versus a 240 volt primary transformer and I will give you a demonstration in a minute. This knob here is from another one of my videos it was on a cam lobe switch I think it was rated 440 volts I found that at an abandoned U.S. military base in the Bahamas. It was a radar facility that was converted into a school, and that was in the power room. The one thing about triacs, when they control a very heavy load, you are going to have a little bit of a voltage drop across the triac. And for this demonstration, I'm also going to be using a 16-gauge extension cord because I'm filming this in a spot where there's no receptacle close by. So you're also going to get a little bit of a voltage drop because of that 25 foot extension cord. If this extension cord was a 14 gauge or a 12 gauge, then the voltage drop would be minimal. Okay, first let's power it up. So right now it's showing 50. And I could turn it over here. We're going to be right around 108, 110. And you can see when the load is connected, I'll take this night light. Now you're getting an accurate reading around 118. And we'll just regulate this down slowly. Now it's basically just a dimmer. And we're looking at roughly 68 volts on the blades. And the current is so low, it's not even registering. It's around 50, 40, then you get 30, 20. Barely, barely glowing. All right, and we're probably around 13 volts. 
And it's off right there. Let's put this back all the way up. Alright, let me take this out. Now I'm going to take a heat gun, plug that in. It goes all the way up to around 9.5 amps. And let's put it on the highest setting first. That's around 75 volts. Around 50. And you can see it dropped off around 500 milliamps. It's pretty cool. Let's put that back. Alright, that works extremely well. Alright. Twenty seven point four volts AC. Now I could leave this on and do it all at the same time if I want. Alright. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the voltage here now is two hundred and forty volts. Two hundred and forty two and I added this little neon lamp. It had a forty seven K drop resistor on it, so I added an extra hundred. It's got a one hundred and fifty K resistor on there. That's your power indicator, and that works fantastic. Let me shut this off for a minute. Before I give you a demonstration using the transformers at twenty seven volts AC, I want to show you something else that I made. This is a very, very useful connector. I'm going to show you right here. Now, what I would use this for is if I'm doing 120 volt tests or 240 volt tests, this allows me to plug directly in. So I could push that all the way in. I could take this right here and I could plug this directly in. And if I want to check something operating on 240, I can now take this and connect it right up. So I could use it here or here. Makes life very, very easy. All right, I'm going to loosen these, give you a nice demo on this. All right, so say you have a transformer like this laying around. And say the windings are very similar. Usually your finer wire on a step-down transformer is your primary winding and it's also the higher resistance and sometimes you may not want to play around measuring or sometimes the readings could be very close and in this case there's no third wire so it's not center tapped so it's hard to tell which is the right one if this label was not here alright the output is blue blue at fourteen and a half so I'm going to take the two blue wires and I'm going to connect it over here. And I'll take this one, put it in the opposite side. All right. So right now we have no idea which set of wires is the right one. So when I turn this on, if I measure the voltage right here, if it's 120, 180, you're going to notice the wires right here are the secondary and then these over here would be the primary. And I could demonstrate it easier by taking this light. Let's just connect it up. It takes two seconds like this. All right. Seven watt night light. I could use the digital meter but it's easier to show this way. All right. So I'm going to turn this on. If that is the secondary, that will come on. And there you go. So now we went from 27, well over 125 volts. If that blew out, then that would mean that this is a 240 volt transformer.
because the output would be too high. If I connected the red wire here instead and the voltage was very very low then you would know that this is your primary winding. Very simple to do and it will save me a lot of time when going through my junk bins identifying transformers that are not marked. The last thing I'm going to do is take this cover off with the four screws show you what the inside looks like along with all my connections. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.